Hello there and welcome back. Um, this episode we're going to be looking at the camera. Um, last episode we were looking at the VTX we're using for this build. Um, so hopefully we can go through this and show you how to connect everything up. First of all, let's talk about what's in the box. So your Fox here Predator camera. It's a very nice little camera. This is the 1.8mm uh, lens, so quite a nice big lens. In the box you also get a little bracket that you can use to make it fit into a larger um, standard uh, HS177 mounting bracket. You get your little um, OSD control, so in these before. Let's that up. There we go. So there's a little cable, and you plug that in, and you can then control that. You get instructions, obviously, and you get your screws, various sizes, and finally, you get your wiring loom. So, what you then do is you need to put this together. So, I'm going to put this into my frame, and I need to have it a little bit wider, so I'm going to use these. Um, use this to make it a bit wider so what I'll do is I'll get the right screws and screw that in. Okay so what you're going to need is four little screws they come in the pack and what you're going to do is you're going to, I've put one of them in already, um, all you're going to do is get your two millimeter hex bolt, pop the screw in and then simply screw it up. Do that all round and that's your camera ready to fit in the frame. Okay, so we've now fitted that onto the, um, the mount, so that should be all ready to go. So now we need to take out the bottom part of our frame, and what we're going to do is we're going to undo these bolts at the bottom here, just on one side. Okay, so now what we need to do is fit the camera. So, as you notice, there's this has got screw holes at the back. Now this would give us an adjustment angle if we wanted it. Um, we're not going to use that on this model, so we're just going to screw it straight into that hole there. So we find ourselves a little screw. Turn that through the hole, make sure we get the camera the right way up. Just that way. Don't worry about camera angles at this moment in time because they're not important here. There we go, and we get our two mil. We screw that in. Okay. Now we've got that in. We can now reassemble the frame, and we should have our camera set up. Okay. So now the frame's back together. All I need to do is put this last screw in here. and that should give me good control of the camera angle for this. Now I'll tighten these up at another point but for today that's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to angle that forward and then we've got our little ribbon cable here that comes out of the back. So what have we got here? So as always the wires are always tied up in a knot. There we go. Right so There we go. Right, so this is what comes out of the back of the camera. So you've got 5 volt ground signal and, uh, and something else. Okay, so you don't need to hear me say clip the ends and trim uh, solder again on those. So I'm not going to tell you again. So all I'm going to do is connect the 5 volts here to the 5 volts on my. Uh... Finally, we know that on here, this cable here is where the video transmitter goes to. So again, we're just going to trim the end, spin it, a little dab of solder on the end of it to tin the wire. There we go, so that's that in. So that should now be everything soldered up. So now we just need to put the frame together. Okay, so let's check this work. So I've now got an antenna set up. I have a little... On my bench I happen to have a little screen set up. Hang on, let me just show you what that looks like. 
So I have a little screen set up beside my bench anyway, so that's what I use to uh, check signals with. So very handy thing if you've got it. If you don't, then uh, you can um, put your goggles on or anything like that. So I'm just going to put a smoke stopper in, make sure everything's okay before I power this up. Um, so what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get my multimeter. I'm just going to put it on just to check various connections do not interfere with each other. So all I do is I find an earth and a ground and I will just make sure that when I connect them together that I get no noise. So that one's fine. If I press the ground, that's work it, that beeps. I expect that. And the same thing here. So I'm not getting any earths, so or any false earths. So that's all ready. Happy with that. So that's all good. Got a smoke stopper on just in case. So let's plug this in and see what we get. Video transmitter's on. Okay, so I've got a signal. So as you can see here, that all seems to be working. So I'm happy that everything's okay. So I'm just going to unplug it again. And we're going to plug it in. So my camera's working. I can see that. Flight control is fired up with that as well. I need to remove the OSD menu off this, but at the moment we have video working, we have motors that seem to be okay, we'll check them properly in a minute, um, we've got a camera that's working, uh, we've got a transmitter that is currently lit up, that's right, and the rear lights aren't working, I haven't plugged them in, but I've tested those before so that seems to be okay. So that's how you connect everything up, now I'm going to do some heat shrinking, um, and I'll then show you how to reconfigure the camera. Okay, so I know this looks like a mess, but it's just the final stage of putting this together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new profile on here. So if I can get this to focus in, hopefully this will help. So I'm going to click on uh, one of my existing profiles. I'm going to select copy. I'm going to place it here. I'm going to go into it. I'm going to select it. Okay. Then I'm going to go into it. It's going to change the name for the moment to something else. I'll give it a proper name in a minute. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it into bind mode. And I'm going to select 16 channels. Put telemetry off because I don't have telemetry on my controller. That should then start beeping. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the receiver, which is over here. I'm going to press and hold this little button here. So, then I can then plug in the quad. Move that slightly out of the way so it's not in in my way. Okay, so I'm going to make sure, as I said, I'm going to make sure this is all pressed. So, difficult to do when you've got one hand. Sorry. Elbows in the way, but you should be able to see that I'm now plugging this in. Right, so it's now in buy mode. So that's now flashing. So that should be binding. Now, if I turn bind mode off on here, so it should stop. I then unplug this plug it back in again. Should be looking. And it's gone green. So that's now bound up to this receiver. So we've now got everything connected, everything's working, and uh, away we go. Okay, so now we're going to take this mess. Everything's connected, everything's working. Receiver. Uh, video transmitter, camera, everything's now there, everything's working and we're going to connect everything up and we should have ourselves a fully working quad. Okay, apologies, this is future Paul speaking. Um, one of the things I noticed when I was editing this footage is that actually the angle for this wasn't very good and it wasn't very clear so I've had to I've sped it up to show that you 
can put it together, mainly using cable ties and a little bit of 3M double-sided sticky tape, which is very useful stuff. Um, so hopefully uh, it, you can fit everything into the frame, so it's not a massive problem. It is tight, but it is it does all go in there. So once you've assembled your frame, the next thing you need to do is you take your drone outside and you do a flight test. Okay, at this point, all you're trying to do is just make sure it actually works. So let's make sure that I'm running the engines consistently so that I've not got a cutout of any sort of overheating on there. I'll just make sure that it responds to pitch roll and yaw as I'd expect to. Did a little throttle test just to make sure it goes up and down. But all I'm basically doing is stress testing to make sure that the basic functions all work. Um, in this case, they all work fine. So once I've finished up with this, I then take it out into the field and give it a fly. So now we take the drone out into the standard running <laughs> rugby field. Um, this is where I pretty much test everything I have. So it's a nice open space, it's easy to control, and if you lose it, you're not going to have to go too far to go and find it. Um, what I'm just trying to do is just assess that the quad actually works and that it behaves as I expect it to do. So basic maneuvers, flips, um, your turns, um, pitch, roll, make sure all of that behaves as I expect it to. Um, one of the things I noticed when flying this is these props I've got here, which are the HQ 6 inch uh, 40, I can't remember, I'll, I'll ping up on screen. Um, they meant that this had was a little bit under propped, it didn't quite have the same power. As you can see there, it doesn't climb quite as quickly as you'd expect it to. Um, so apologies also for the water on the lens, it was a bit of a wet day, so um, I had to do the best I could. Um, so I found that it wasn't quite as powerful as I wanted it to be. So after doing some basic testing and being happy with the fundamentals, it, it flies, it's actually very stable and the, 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 the way the FC works is really good, it does stop quite nicely um, when you turn, so I was really impressed with the flight controller, um, so that's a straight line test, so it's just not quick enough. So what I decided to do was uh, do something a little bit different. So this was a couple of weeks later, so this is running on a uh, Gemfan 6 inch um, by blade props and it has a lot more punch a lot more punch it's also running um, I think this one is running on 5s because the ESC's we're running and the motors we're running are designed for 5s so what I'm I'm just so impressed with the way this uh, frame flies it is really nice and really easy to to set up and it handles really really well um, also worth mentioning that the um, the camera the, the Predator V2 is, is a really nice camera. You can really see what's going on. Uh, you can get a good view of what's happening and it, it really goes from those light to dark transitions really, really well. So I was, I was very impressed with that. Um, sorry, I haven't got the DVR footage to go with that. Obviously the GoPro is, is struggling a little bit um, with the wonders of the English weather. Um, but fundamentally, this is just a lovely little drone to fly. and. Um, you can hear by the pitch of the props that it's really working hard. So this this setup, if you've gone for the same thing as me, you want to have some by blades. They really give you um, a good setup. One of the other things I've done with this um, with this frame, which I'll just talk about, but I haven't got any footage to show you, is I've actually set it up for long range. So I've um, added in a uh, long range module. I've also set it up so that I can use. Um, I've been using 5S with um, uh, the Avian long range props and I managed to get a 1500 battery to run fly for seven and a half minutes which I thought was very impressive. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, this is the final part of this series. I might do a little revisit after a few months but um, this is where we're at. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Please like, share and subscribe um, and I will be doing some more build videos soon. Thanks very much and I'll see you all next time.